Alan McGee, welcome to the show. How are you doing, mate? Very good, man. Very good. Brilliant. You're about to do um, quite a few evenings with Alan McGee up and down the country. You're looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how it came about was uh, we did one in, in a Liverpool, uh, me and Rob Fidman. Um, and we put it up on the internet, and from that we got another two. And then uh, we put these on, on a, we put these on sale, and we ended up uh, getting involved with Kevin and just some like I think thirty seven books. <laughs> yeah, so, it's quite bad. It's just kind of hard. It's kind of just you know they said you want to do them, and I was like, I'm, I'm a grafter. I like to do. Well, that's it. There's so many fans with so many questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I bet you're going to get asked yeah. the same questions over and over again, but you're looking forward to it. <laughs> but we don't do one of them. Definitely one of them but, but yeah, I mean, I've been doing them. I did one in Sydney a couple of weeks ago. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's good. You know, I mean, actually, the questions for the Australians is pretty good, to be honest. You know, I mean, they're really varied. You know what I mean? You know? So yeah, it'll be, it'll be everything. It'll be a lot of how did you get into music? People go and. Can, can you tell me what to do? So I to, to people asking about the Gallagher's to, to you know, to, to end this and you know. Well, that's what you're best known for, is signing Oasis. And um, you had a musical career before that and worked in the music business for years and years. I still do it, man. I still, still manage bands. And, and uh, you know, I've got a label because actually it's up again. So it's just been my thing, you know. Yeah. There's a film coming out as well. But Irvin Welsh is doing a film. It's, it's, it's really, it's in the last little bit of funding and then that goes into production. And that's the film of a book. Irvin Welsh is on the screenplay. You know. Yeah. The, the screen, they, they turned it down the script here. I was going to say, you're still working really hard. You're working with people like Sean Ryder. Would you like to yeah, manage yeah, no. Would you like to manage them back in 1990? Yeah, I would have loved it. But, I mean, I was like, I, mean, we were I knew Sean then. I, I was big mates with him on these yeah. back in the day. I used to party with them, to be honest, you know what I mean? But hey, the only people are still alive from these days are probably me, Sean, and, and Bez. But, but a lot of these people now, you know, I think I could probably got involved with them in the last five years or simply because, like, they looked about and and they were, didn't even have a manager at the time and were like, oh, McGee's still alive, let's, let's get him, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's the man to talk to. I want to talk a little bit about the 90s because uh, that first sure, Oasis gig, you went to see a friend play in Glasgow and yeah, Oasis yeah. managed to squeeze on the bill. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But King Tut's has been a lucky place for me because I found Las Vegas there as well. You yeah. Know? I managed Las Vegas. And we, I found them 12 years ago uh, on the, what, what about the bill where they, they were really... They were third in the bill. I, I found Las Vegas and I found Oasis both at King Tut's. Were they both eureka moments, or is it something you thought, oh, they could actually sell some records, maybe? Or I just thought they were both going to do well. You know, I mean, Oasis obviously got that really fucking wrong because you know they, they uh, you know, they done brilliant, you know. Um, but um, but yeah, yeah, Las Vegas did pretty well as well. We got a platinum album. The they did. Album. Yeah, and they're back again now, aren't they, Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah, we're, tra- we're trying to bring them back, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, with Oasis, was it um, a big percentage of the music or was it the on-stage persona that sold it to you? No, it was the music, obviously. I'm a yeah. music person. I mean, it's like, you could be naked, but <laughs> bit, bit crap, and I'm still not going to sign you, do you know what I mean, you know? <laughs> it come under the term Britpop in the end. Is that a term that you like for the genre or, you know, is it just rock and roll? It, to me, it was just always music, but mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, but, but, but you said the purpose. It can explain it to a lot of people probably that didn't really like music, if you know what I'm trying to say, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just a term. It was invented, I think, by the Times or something like that. Do you know what I mean? You know? Yeah. As soon as you say that phrase, you you transported straight back to yeah. the times of Cash yeah. Shed Seven, Oasis, yeah. Blur, the Blue Tones. Yeah. It's a great time. But it's, a lot of these bands were great. Though. I mean, Shed Seven, Blue Tones, both great, great bands, great songwriters. Mm. Yeah, and they're still doing all right today, you know. Yeah, I think both of them are selling out tours. Um, yeah. Is there a band from that time that you wish you'd have signed or worked with? Yeah, well, a bit earlier than I thought. I wish I'd signed Stone Roses, but that's just me, you know. I mean, I love Stone Roses. Yeah, yeah, that could have been big as well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so you're coming to Stoke um, as part of this An Evening With tour. Um, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is it something that you hold dear? I've got actually good friends in Stoke. There's a, a Rob, what's there, Rob Fiddeman, mm-hmm. and, 
I've got a couple of girls that I'm good pals with that live up there as well. So it's like, you know, it's, I really like that place, you know, it's good. Yeah, one of the first things Rob will say to you is that Oasis played at the Wheat Sheaf and he's got the tickets and he's got the, <laughs> the set list because he, he collects memorabilia. He's, yeah, I know, I know. I've, I've sold a lot of stuff through him, you know what I mean? You know, because I, I had to buy my, my stepdad, uh, not my stepdad, my, my wife's stepfather, I had to uh, get him a buy, buy, you know, build a house at the bottom of my, my garden in, in Wales and uh, and uh, you know, I sold all the memorabilia and built a house. You know, <laughs> it's easy as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of memorabilia. So this tour, it's uh, an on stage in front of a crowd um, yeah. with Rob hosting it, and you're going to be telling some stories and answering questions. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good fun, man. People can ask anything they want. I'll answer it. Yeah, and I think Rob's DJing after it, and I think there's a few bands playing oh, as well. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, so it'll be a good night, man. Yeah, because I put this out on social media that we were interviewing you, and I got a few questions. I looked at some of them straight away, and I thought, I know the answers to these, and everyone does, but <laughs> I picked a few out, which I think you might be interested in. So the Where first one, is it true you nearly kept the chocolate-covered Rolls Royce you gave to Noel? Well, I wanted to. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd never been in a Rolls Royce before, and I bought them it. It wasn't expensive, it was about 12 grand or something like that, and... Uh, I got in it, because I thought it would be about 100 grand, it was about 12 grand for a second hand. But, yeah. And then I got in it, and I went, oh, actually, I like this. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. <laughs> so that, that's what happens. I bet it was difficult, yeah, if you've never been in one before. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is, uh, did you rate or do you rate Blur as a band? Yeah, really good. I think he's he's amazing, Damon Albarn. The guitar player's great as well. You know, both really talented people. Yeah, keep reinventing themselves as well, don't they? yeah. Really good, good the band. band the Queen, I think, is his latest project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's got about three on the go yeah. the whole time. He's got, Always. He's got the blast thing, but he's also got Gorillas are huge and, and good band the Queen, which is good as well. Yeah. Um, the next question is, um, did you have a favourite out of Liam and Noel at the time? <laughs> no, I didn't. No. no. <laughs> he's like choosing your favourite kid, isn't he? Because yeah, they yeah, were yeah. like a family to you. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they'll ever reform Oasis? Um, I don't know. Don't I don't not any time soon. Do you know what I mean? You think it's his paycheck or it's still the no, fallout I that they've had? They've, they've just fallen out, you know. So let's we'll see what happens here. You know? I've got to mention Primal Scream being a fan. Bobby Gillespie is a bit of a hero of mine. Uh, he's still seen popping up now and again. If he's not playing music or touring, uh, he's on politics shows. What's he like to be around? Oh, he's great. He's fine. You know what I mean? He's a good guy. You know, it's like a, you know, very passionate about music. That's his whole life, really. To be honest. Because they were um, a band that had quite a few banging hits in the 90s. And uh, yeah, again, yeah. when they came back a few years ago and did some touring, people were really excited about it. Yeah, yeah. They're a great band, man. Yeah. Do, do you think that, um, that because there isn't really a massive indie scene at the moment, people look back on these bands and think, you know, we want to go these tours? No, I think because... there, is a, there is a good indie scene. It's just it's mm-hmm. not getting the... <laughs> it's, a... <laughs> it's not getting the exposure. Yeah. But there's good bands. I'm signing up a lot of the little bands at the moment. They're great bands, you know. That's what I meant. There is some great indie bands out there if you go looking for them, but they're not played on the radio or on TV. You won't find it as much. So, yeah, get out and watch some live music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan, I could chat to you all day and night about music, but uh, I'm going to have to wait to the Underground gig. It's on the 28th of April at the Underground. Special guests, uh, the Jade Assembly and Marquee Drive. DJ and uh, host for the night is Rob Fiddeman. I can't wait. I'll see you down there. All right, mate. And I'll see you then. All yeah. right. You take Thank care, you mate. So much. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.